Aloha and uh, welcome to today's show. The state of the state of Hawaii is today's show and it's on Think Tech Hawaii's live streaming network series. Think Tech Hawaii broadcasts from our downtown studio at 1164 Bishop Street at the core of downtown Honolulu and it also uh, operates remotely. I am your host, Stephanie Stahl Dalton, and given our social distancing practices these days, I am broadcasting remotely. Our guest today is Dr. Andrea Braun, who practices general dentistry and serves as an executive dental coach for a fortune company to improve dental practices and services across the islands for um, Hawaii residents. Welcome, Dr. Braun. Well, thank you. My pleasure being here. I appreciate it. Great. Well, and uh, Dr. Brown, may I call you Andy in this conversation, having known you? As Absolutely. Long as I have. Yes. Please call me Andy. Thank <laughs> That's you. my my oh. nickname is Dr. Andy. <laughs> but okay. Andy's fine. That's good. Oh, that's great. Okay. So for today's show, titled Hawaii's Dental Community During COVID 19, um, Andy uh, will tell us about the pandemic's effects on the small business community of dentistry. And according to the national data, Hawaii is one of the hardest hit states under our circumstances of the pandemic, and it ranks as number 15 in impacts. Particularly for small businesses, there are major concerns about operations shutdown and the ensuing unemployment uh, claims, which in Hawaii have increased 4,000% since 2019. At the federal level, the generosity of Congress's $2 million CARES Act is a gift and also a problem, particularly for small businesses, to choose how to manage the funding as loans and grants in their best interests and often um, as the only means to their survival. So Dr. Brun, Andy, tell us how your small business community, Hawaii dentists and their staffs are managing COVID-19 challenges. What are the major issues affecting this small business community? Well, I can honestly tell you it's it's been a whirlwind really since the middle of March and when the American Dental Association came out with their guidelines of just social distancing and limiting your care to emergent care, uh, our dentists here really had to scramble to uh, make plans and make plans fast and you know it's been a scrolling um changing landscape that we've really had to keep up with on every level and we've been working with our close to two dozen um, businesses here that uh, represent our healthcare community of dental providers of you know general dentists all the way to specialists and it has been um just unprecedented and uh just really really intense um so our first focus was really about our people because uh, the teams that we work with are just like our family. And so when we have to make really big, important decisions that affect and trickle down all the way to, you know, our extended family of our coworkers that we spend more time with sometimes than we do our own families, it's, it's quite wrenching, I would say, is the best word I can, I can describe how, the, you know, how the doctors have been feeling about all of this. Well, what so are the started, major? Yeah, we started our, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I don't want to step. Well, on I was going to say what uh, I know. You're allowed to take a breath there, and uh, I uh, hope I didn't jump in too fast. I was just wanting to pursue that and find out what are the major effects on these people, and how are the employees feeling about the circumstances. <laughs> yes uh, you know it's a two double-edged sword because we need to protect the business the owner and we need to protect the people and not have anybody get you know damaged too badly in any of this and so um now that the cares act has really straightened out and we really understand it and we know what the provisions are going to be and how the government is working so hard and fast and furious to get the funds to the small businesses it's given a little bit more certainty that to the teams um so we you know a majority of the people are have taken um laid off due to lack of work so they're on full unemployment 
or they're on temporary partial layoff at zero hours. And our doctors have had to really work on identifying who their essential team members are because there's still business at hand. There's still emergency patients that need to be seen. There's all kinds of work to do behind the scenes of rescheduling and just, you know, on all the different levels of a small business and a small healthcare provider business, um, you know, between inventory and uh, the financial engine, we work around five financial engine, five business engines. And so all of those engines have to be, have to be kept at a good idle, a good strong idle in order for the practice to remain viable when they do open their doors. So well, it's, I'm really it's a lot. <laughs> gave that detail because that was one of my questions. I know in some of the um, writings about this, they mentioned how disadvantageous this is for other than law firms and other kinds of businesses where there's no uh, issue with working from home. You can do just as much from home as you can from the office. And I wanted to ask you specifically, and, and you did mention all of that, how that and, and you clarified that actually there is still a lot to do in the office, but not for all the employees. So the wrenches, who, who are these essential workers who can maintain the position? And then the question is, do, um, does the in, do the income levels of the earning levels of the employees of uh, dental practices, are they high enough to compete with the unemployment offering that we have for people? And so is that an issue for the employee as to whether they will take the unemployment because it will provide them with a little more income versus staying uh, with you all so that they can assure they are kept on and return when you come back up. What about that complexity? In other words, how, how do they... Um, are we back up? Yeah. Uh -huh. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. Can you right. hear, that, you can was hear that me? Okay. So, did that, yeah. yeah. Something um, something froze up on us, but anyway, we yes, we've been looking at that because there is a point at which it tips where the person would be better off for the extended length of time on the full unemployment, with given the fact of the, you know, the um, formulas that state of Hawaii has uh, applied and how they figure out what the weekly unemployment is on a full unemployment, and then you add the benefit of the six hundred dollars on top of that per week. And so um, there is a there is a point in the hourly wage, which are a lot of our workers fall into where they're going to be, you know, our doctors are are ready to have that conversation with the team members. And so there's a lot of opportunity in this whole thing. It's um, it's really making us think on a lot of different different levels. Um, and so and when we when we do come back on board, whenever that is, you know, it's going to be a kind of a titration effect because it's going to take a little while for us to be back where back to the business levels that we were when we closed down. And so, I mean, in a lot of ways, it's great that all that is there to support the team members um, that aren't going to be able to come right back. The administrative team members, the ones that are working the financial engines and the scheduling coordinators and and the people that are doing all the inventory and ordering and stocking um, are are the ones that are you know are going to be the busiest in the early phases. And so, and as we get clo closer to a, a point in time where we don't have as many new cases or zero new cases for four or five six weeks, then you know it's going to be it's it's going to be a different picture. Well, in your case, in the case of these small business practices, are they going to have or dental practices going to have the the good fortune to come right back up to 100% or will there be, and of course this depends on the state again too, right? If they're gonna be regular rules or, or uh, uh, guidance on how to come back up, but assuming you could do what you wanted to do, would, would you be able to get right back up to 100% therefore be able to rehire and just get on with business? Can you tell us a little bit about what your future there might be? That's a really broad topic because a lot of this has to do with um, the education and the understanding levels of our patients. So the communication about this and the safety that is going to be available for the patients and for the team is of the utmost concern and, you know, main main priority of all the business owners is to really understand this virus, understand the working environment, how can we protect the patients, how do we screen the patients. I mean, the nature of this virus is so um, 
kind of betwixting because, you know, we have to assume everybody has it um, until we just don't have any more new cases pop up. It's it's presenting opportunities uh, in the clinical arena. Uh, dentistry has always been practicing to keep everyone safe because we deal with aerosols all the time <laughs> and because we deal with bloodborne pathogens and we have to assume and all of our standards are based around people assuming they all have tuberculosis or hep C or HIV. We can't assume anybody walking in the door has nothing. We always have to understand all the health precautions and and apply them universally, no matter who our patient is. And so that way we keep everybody safe. And so dentistry um, will rise to this occasion. I have no doubt we have, um, you know, we have been really great at that in, in all the industries. We've been top notch in that. And so I don't see this gonna be any different except it may look different and feel different to the patient experience. Um, well, so I was wondering, if you are careful, I mean, is, is this a factor that people will be afraid to come back? I mean, I don't think anybody's going to be afraid to go back to the lawyer or the CPA or the whoever's office they've got to get into. But do you think that there's a, a factor of fear that people will have about, in fact, that you do all of that and will they be safe? And is the community doing anything about that or is it an issue? Yeah. Right. Well, I think it layers on top of all the other fears having to do with going to the dentist. <laughs> However, I think this is a time for really clear and open communication with your practice. If you do have concerns about how safe will I be, um, you know, that's the time to pick up the phone and ask. And our practices are all over communicating at this point. That's what leadership is. We over communicate in times of crisis. And so every doctor is reaching out to their patients and helping them understand, you know, when we come back, it's going to be a very safe environment for you, just like it always has been. We might look different. We might have different, some different gowns on, some different PPE masks. You know, our dentists have always, you know, you go to the dentist and everyone's wearing the masks and gloves and goggles and glasses. And so they might be a little different style or a little, little different standard or have different, you know, um, guardianship so or levels of protection for the people that wear them and and then turning rooms over will be um you know probably something that you'll be more aware of and uh so that you know all of these um all of these universal precautions that we're all going to be taken are based on cdc guidelines and um, all with this virus in mind and how we can protect each other from this. I think what's really been missing, I mean, I think maybe they don't, they don't have all the information yet, but I am really excited about the public understanding more about this virus and how, how can we keep healthy. And so what'll come, I think in the coming weeks when the researchers really understand more and then they educate all of us, we'll all have a better understanding of this. Well, I'd like to probe into some of those precautions. So what has this, this what they call the nov, a novel virus, what has this forced other practices uh, into doing? I mean, that, that adds expense to the small business consideration, and I'm sure we'll have to go on, but I mean, assuming that, that, that the fact that this is so virulently uh, transferred and, and, and um, infectious, what what is it that you all are having to do from the inside here we've lived with coronaviruses in our world um forever and they're pretty benign when they you know they they're they're the cause of most of our colds and flus and whatnot the one that makes this one so tough is that it you know it was a it was a benign virus in the animal world amongst the the uh, bat population and then it somehow mutated and got to really like like human beings and it has really um, created, I think, all this havoc because it's so hard to know when someone's actually has the virus. And so, and it's, and it's infectiousness um, because it, I guess it, you know, it, it persists uh, on surfaces or if you're in close relationship to a person, um, then, you know, there's, there's a bigger likelihood that it'll be transmitted. So, um, well, what it's going to mean to dentistry is we've always been huge on surface disinfection, whether it's the chairs and the handles, you've seen all the plastic on the sterilization that we do and everything. And so, um, Ten, tending now more in these interim phases, I don't know how long this is going to have to go on, but just, um, 
working more with the aerosol. And so there are techniques that we have, we'll be putting in place, much as what's come off of like the, the cruise ship industry where they've gone and disinfected all the surfaces and sprayed rooms and whatnot. So um, all we need to do is aerosolize a room after it's been used or an aerosol has been created in it. And, um, mist the room so that whatever that that mist and the little chemistry inside the mist it's kind of likened to a uh, mm -hmm. a saline uh aromatized aerosolized saline solution that just mists the room and pulls all of those um any particles that are in the air down makes them heavy and then the floor is cleaned so as far as there's going to be extra steps and then the ppe that is required is going to be a little bit more expensive for the doctors with the you know the different kind of coats and um maybe even covering the hair the hair gear there's going to be you know hair covers that will you you wouldn't necessarily see you know 10 months ago on a dentist so it'll just i think you'll see that there we're taking the extra precautions and yes there is going to be an added expense for all the owners and um you know that likely will be passed on to the patient in some form just like um you know in many other industries that have to take extra extra precautions whether it's hotel industry or restaurant industry we don't you know we don't really know how that's going to look well i know you you may have the, 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 the medical the, the medical professions like at queens or at the hospitals or that aerosol that's a new notion um anyway for me but um that sounds um very helpful that you can mystify or miss the room and have it actually take care of the particles and then you only have the floor that needs to be antiseptically cleaned so what about your um ppes your all of your paraphernalia that you wear and the protective gear and everything has uh have the dental um communities been asked to donate those to the hospitals here in hawaii what's been the situation and why have they had enough or, they, or what, they what really, happened I think, yeah I, the part of the ada guidelines that came out and said that you know basic general dental practices um that are that are doing anything other than emergent care really that was the effort behind that was really to help flatten the curve and help keep PPE available to the hospitals and not be such a burden and not take, you know, that supply chain management of the PPEs, whether it's your basic surgical mask and gloves and gowns and whatnot. But, um, you know, there's gonna be ongoing screening of the patients. And so there's really great, um, kind of protocols for you know if a patient really gets screened and there's absolutely no um no risk based on their sheltering in place recently they haven't been traveling they don't have any kind of upper respiratory cough they don't have a fever and they pass all of this um you know all those check boxes are off then it's going to look very normal for that patient uh, in the dental practice versus someone who may have an, a dental emergency, but they think that they've had, you know, they've been um, exposed or uh, been in close contact with someone who they know is positive or um, they've been tested and they have positive, but they can't shelter in place right now because they have a bad toothache. There's, there's protocols in place to take care of those patients uh, in a timely manner without creating, you know, without having to reinvent our wheel it's 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 very manageable well i'm thinking that um the about 70 cent 77 percent of the hawaii um gdp the domestic the gross domestic product comes from local local business so with the dentistry down and the, this dental community, this small business community down, what portion, do you have any notion of what section of uh, depletion or where, where, how, how short Hawaii is gonna be because of this industry being out? Because as I'm understanding, it's pretty much out, right? 
it is it recommending that it, so, yeah well, we're recommending our doctors start ordering now and honestly the dental supply houses and that supply chain that brings those um to den to dentistry have been very great at communicating what's happening on their end and how what kind of expectations we can have on this end for finding those kind of equipment and the more time that goes on i think the easier that's going to be and so um our our organization is working on that as well for our family of doctors that are being coached by us. Um, they are, you know, there, there'll be different supply lines that'll funnel uh, practice PPE to those practices as well so that everybody can open up and be safe. And I, you know, I think the patients also, when they're, when they're experienced, when they come back to the office, they might ask be asked to do things like simple rinses. They'll be, um, they might have their temperature taken. They might be asked to wash their hands. Um, they might be asked to bring their own blankets and their own pillows and their own headsets, those kinds of things or their own, you know, just for their own personal comfort, uh, which really helps reduce, you know, the cross contamination. So, but as far as the supplies, uh, we're gonna have what we need otherwise, um, We'll postpone yeah. what we need to do yeah. until we have that. Have that. Well, I think that everybody would love to be able to bring their own binky to come to the dentist. That would be very <laughs> comfortable to have. Definitely. In our chairs. But, and whatever it takes, so you know, to as good. A, <laughs> what worked. And the comfort level would be marvelous. But anyway, I know you all are very good at doing that now compared to many years ago when. We're, tennis weren't so uh, good with this chair side manner, which has changed quite a bit. But anyway, I wanted to um, kind of go back to this gross domestic product thing. So I mean, with dentistry, with with the dental business community going down, um, and people are not coming in, they're not, they're not having the procedures, you're not billing, nothing's happening now. I mean, this is going to be at least two months, right? I mean, of that entire community in Hawaii, that is a huge chunk, isn't it? Of, uh, think, of state yeah, revenue, think of actually. I mean, it's a huge chunk of money, plus then you get to pay your taxes to the state, and then they don't get those for probably these two months. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, I wonder, I was just wondering what, uh, if that was uh, not really on anybody's mind, probably that they're not going to be paying their state taxes. But I think the realization yeah. of how it is that a small business community is important to uh, the state's economy and that this could punch oh, it a, a is. hole. And yeah, you think about everything, the impact of this. Now, I mean, we're just a small little emblem of a bigger picture and the trickle down effect into this is just so critical um, because you know, even at, you know, all these, mo I mean, the, the workers in dentistry are primarily women and a lot of them have children and they're in a two income household and they they must work. And so now we're gonna have, you know, what's gonna be happening with all the, um, you know, with the childcare and all of those needs for, for those, um, you know, for those young people. And so we're just getting, we're starting to think really outside the, well, outside the box so that our community of dentistry can support our workers and get everybody back on board as quickly as possible um, in unique ways that um, that we're really we're really excited about and proud about and having really great conversations about. So, you know, what the trite saying is out of every uh, crisis comes opportunity, but that is really, really, really true. And, that, you know, mm -hmm. for patients too, I mean, the, the general public are going to be there they're also not working and so um well a great deal of them you look at the different sectors the hotel and restaurant business and the tourism business and people are gonna really um they're gonna postpone postpone things probably and dentistry is one of those things they might postpone. so yeah we're that, just that's um, another, so i mean yeah. that relates to your coming back up to 100 percent because this is something yeah. that people yeah. are not too offend are We'll put off. We'll put off go, mm -hmm. going to the dentist mm -hmm. unless they're in an emergency mm -hmm. situation. So, um, so this could be yeah. quite, a, quite an effect that way. But all right. So I wanted to ask about the, um, the 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 effect on actually, as you say, primarily women who are. Um, you're not saying primarily there are women dentists because it's probably about even now, right? But the staff yeah, is primarily. 
professional. The staff women. is, and then, um, yeah. you know, the hygiene, I want to talk about the dental hygiene community because they have been extremely hit hard in this because even when the dentists, if they open their doors again, when they open their doors again, um, it could be that they open their doors for restorative and they're, they're triaging their patients as to, well, you've put this off for now two months and now it's starting to hurt and, um, and you're, you're screening really well, so you're very low risk. You haven't got, you know, so you're basically just come back in and get, get your treatment that you needed. The hygiene department, we're going to be working hard at communicating with patients the importance of that full body health. And if they go without, you know, people that have chronic other chronic illnesses like diabetes or high blood pressure mm -hmm. and the, old, the elderly or they have dry mouth and they're getting cavities. I mean, this, this whole thing, um, I think sometimes dentistry and the oral health takes a back seat uh, to medicine. It's just, we see so much before any medical doctor does that we're really the sentinel um, for many, for many people to, you know, raise the red flag and be you really need to go get this checked out. So I would just urge people listening to this to, um, you know, don't, don't put off that, uh, that dental cleaning as soon as you're able to support uh, your oral care in that way, um, you know, postponing a dental cleaning may sound minimal. It's just, there's a lot of things that can go wrong in a short amount of time. So, um, don't put it well, off. Get a, in, get it back in there. Sound, yeah. A very tight community and, it, and you describe it in familiar yeah. terms and people are really, um, uh, affiliated, uh, uh, over it. And, uh, so does that remove any issues about the unemployment? So, I mean, if, Although it may be that your salaries are um, adequate or, or high high enough level to keep people um, uh, hanging on, so to speak, or waiting or willing to support the practice in that way with some sacrifice. But if there is an unemployment check, that would be more. Are the dentists concerned about that? And would they change? Would well, and and yeah. Yeah, definitely not. You know, with associate doctors um, on board and also dental hygienists being more highly compensated, no way is the unemployment going to help, is going to sustain them in the way that their own full time salary would have or their full time um, wages. So um, it's really the oh, more um, middle. Yeah. yeah, it's more the maybe that 15 to $18 range of worker that it would be the dental assistants or the receptionists mm -hmm. and um, that category of worker that might have uh, second thoughts about that. And you know what, this is a great time for people that might not be that happy at their job to go, you know, there's, this is, like I said, yeah. there's, well, there's opportunity. opportunity at the same time <laughs> the but it does seem like so, the dental community is, is po this, that small business is a double, has the advantages, yeah. disadvantages yeah. that people ha yeah. are, are enduring. But it's not. But it's kind of balanced. It's not all all bad. It is balanced for the employer and the employee. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's been a pleasure and very informative, and we're out of time, so we'll have to I wrap know, it, it goes up. Fast, like you said. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm well, seventy so Dalton. Whenever, so thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'm <laughs> good. I'm seventy so Dalton, and this is the state of the state of Hawaii on Think Tank. Thick Tech live streaming network series. And we've been talking remotely with Dr. Andrea Braun about Hawaii's dental community during COVID-19. I'll see you again in two weeks on the next State of the State of Hawaii. Mahalo for your attention and aloha, everyone.